All right, as we count down to kick off to the SEC championship game, I've got Kevin Skarbinski here to talk a little Auburn football, and we start with Kerryon Johnson. There's a little bit of concern, the coaching staff being very vague about his injuries and what happened to him in the Alabama football game. Um, will he be available to play? Uh, if so, how many carries, how many reps will he get? In your opinion, Kevin, how critical and how crucial will it be that Kerryon Johnson plays in this football game for them to have success against Georgia like they did three weeks ago? Look, let's be honest. One of the main reasons that Auburn is one of the best teams in college football right now, number two in the next to last college football playoff rankings, maybe the best team in college football right now, is Kerryon Johnson. Mm -hmm. He's become a man. He's become a workhorse. Look at how many touches he had against Alabama, 34, 30 carries against that defense. And he has just become one of the best players in college football. There is no question that if he is out, certainly, or even limited, that's going to affect the Auburn offense. But one thing that I think Auburn can take solace in is the growth of Jared Stidham mm -hmm. and the receivers and the passing game. Ryan Davis was unbelievable against Alabama. 11 catches against that secondary. Georgia's secondary is good. It's not as good as Alabama's secondary. And Ryan Davis was running free all night long. And then look at the development of Chip Lindsey as the offensive coordinator in calling the passing game. He called a brilliant game against Alabama. And I wouldn't expect anything less against Georgia. That jump pass touchdown, <laughs> which was thrown by Kerryon Incredible. Johnson, that was, was, awesome. was amazing. But it's not just Ryan Davis. Remember Darius Slayton caught mm -hmm. that huge touchdown pass from Jarrett Stidham that really got Auburn rolling in the Georgia game yep. the first time And a around. lot of critical third down situations. Yes. And so Jarrett Stidham himself, now they don't want to throw 40 passes right. or 45 passes. If they have to throw that many, that may mean a much closer game than we saw the first time when Georgia went to Auburn. But I think they're capable of winning if Jarrett Stidham has to be the man and if they have to lean on the passing game more than they have all year long i think he's good enough i think the receivers are good enough that they can kind of make up for a less than 100 percent carry on johnson all right kevin some other question for you is if they are going to lean on their running game obviously we've had cam petway out for the majority of the season carry on johnson undecided has this auburn team done themselves a disservice by not developing some of their other running backs in some ways, yes, because look at how they've won a lot of their games. They've blown out most of their SEC competition. They've scored more points against SEC opponents than they ever have in their entire history. Mm -hmm. And that's even more than Cam Newton and company scored in 2010 when they were putting a lot of points on the board. So they had opportunities against the likes of Arkansas, say, or Mississippi State to get other backs more carries, but it's a Gus Malzahn staple that he loves to lean on one guy. He did mm -hmm. it with Trey Mason in 2013, yep. did it with Mike Dyer as a running back in 2010. Of course, Cam Newton Gosh. helped the running game just a little bit. Taking us way back, it feels yeah. like. But, it so really that, but that's, that's a standard, that's a Gus Malzahn thing. Mm -hmm. He likes to lean on one guy. So what do you do if you can't lean on that guy if he's not stable enough or healthy enough to carry the ball 25 to 30 times, which has become the standard of that Auburn offense? Cam Martin has done good things in flashes. Yep. He has a world of ability. He's not Kerryon Johnson, but he can take it the distance from anywhere on the field. He can catch the ball out of the backfield. He becomes the feature back if Kerryon has to sit for any length of time. And then what do you have beyond him? Malik Miller doesn't have the burst. He doesn't have the explosion. He's a good, tough two, three yard uh, yards when you need it kind of runner between the tackles. And, and that's why I think you're going to see Auburn, if Kerryon Johnson is extremely limited, lean more on the passing game this week than on the running game. All right, Kevin, when you look at what Gus Malzahn has accomplished, you know, he's built something tremendous here at Auburn. Obviously, there's been some ups and downs, but when you look at just this season, what is his legacy going to be? Obviously, winning the SEC West, uh, potential SEC championship on the line, and of course, if that goes in his favor, then it's on to the college football playoff. But just your thoughts overall, if they win this SEC championship game this weekend, what is his legacy in the minds of the college football world? I, I think it's got to be positive. For the second time in five years, he has a team good enough to play for the SEC championship and possibly to win it. For the second time in five years, he has a team good enough to possibly play for the national championship and perhaps get over the top this time. They came so close in 2013 against Florida State. And, and yes, the last three years have been mediocre, but you can't give Gus Malzahn enough credit this year for the way he has kept that team together after that ugly loss, that collapse at LSU. They, they went the right direction. They pulled together. They got better as the year went on. And they put together two of the biggest wins of his tenure against number one Georgia and then number one Alabama. 
that is a tribute to him. And no matter what happens against Georgia, no matter what happens after that, you cannot take that away from him, and you shouldn't discount it either. Because outside of Nick Saban, no one else in the SEC has done in recent times what Gus Malzahn has done. Very good point there. Now, if he were to lose this football game, if Auburn goes in and loses this football game to Georgia this weekend, how does that legacy change? How does the perception of Gus Malzahn's success change, in your opinion? Well, I don't know how much the perception or legacy changes, but he may have a decision to make mm -hmm. because it fully appears, as of this taping, we always have to say that with this crazy coaching carousel that's going on uh, over the last week. Especially as of late. This week has just been... It's been relatively quiet at Arkansas. Mm -hmm. They have formed a search, or they have hired a search firm, two different search firms, one to help them find an athletic director, another to help them find a head football coach. As of this taping, they haven't found a head football coach. I believe, especially if Auburn loses to Georgia, Arkansas is going to make Gus Malzahn say no. I think they're going to throw everything they can at him to try to lure him home. And then it becomes a decision for Gus Malzahn. Does he see the future? Does he see a bright future at Auburn? He said as much after the Alabama win. It was very interesting to say this thing could be good for a long time. I thought that was a very telling comment from him in the the emotional aftermath of beating Alabama for him to talk about the future. Mm -hmm. How many commitments have they gotten just in the last week? Right. It, so everything looks good. Kevin Steele, they recently signed him to a new three-year contract. So he has been an integral part of that success. Chip Lindsey has grown tremendously this year as offensive coordinator. If he doesn't leave for a head coaching job at a place like South Alabama, they've got a great staff. They've got two really strong coordinators. You've got a lot of talent coming back. I've said this before, I think Gus Malzahn would be crazy to leave Auburn for Arkansas. Arkansas has never won as much as an SEC championship since 1992. Gus Malzahn's playing for his second in five years on Saturday, which is the better job. It's no contest. Yep, all signs pointing in a positive direction on the Plains. Of course, we'll have all your news and analysis as we get ready for the SEC championship game. You can see all those on AL.com.